Hello, can anybody hear me? Yes. yes? All right. I'm very glad you are all here, and I'm sorry you have been uh, kept waiting for so long, but at least it's not so hot here as it is outside. Uh, thank you, Vesurgin, for the introduction. I'm very grateful to Life Planner for inviting me and giving us a chance to learn more about you know, Poland and Łódź, which is the city that, we, that I come from, and the university. So, are there any parents here? Parents? Yes, parents? No, no, yes? Some parents? Oh, you are. Oh, now I, I can hear myself. Thank you. All right. Uh, is it okay if I'm here, standing in front? Yes? Don't, I don't scare you? Good. Now, uh, as Sujin mentioned, my uh, first name is Liliana. My last name is Lato. So, Students sometimes call me Miss Lato, sometimes they, they call me Lady Boss, <laughs> Miss Boss, <laughs> or they call me Liliana. Because in Poland, just like in the States, uh, we are quite o open and the formalities are not always used. That's one of, the, uh, one of the differences, cultural differences that we might have between Poland and India. Because here, you keep the respect, sir, madam, to elders and even to people of your age. In Poland, to some extent, yes, but very often when somebody is open, people just use first names very easily. But I think I'm getting older, so maybe I will stick to the madam version <laughs> for some time. Okay, uh, I am the head of the International Relations Office. Uh, this is the office that is uh, predomin predominantly dealing with the students. The students and their needs. So we take care of the international students that come for full degree studies and we also take care of the students that come for the exchange programs, which means they visit the University of Wuchwon for one semester or one year from different countries, mostly in Europe, but not only. Uh, for this year uh, and the last one, I'm also the chair of the uh, forum, which, which is called the International Relations Forum, Offices Forum, which means that 20 Polish universities, state public universities, bureaus like mine, the heads of the office have a, an organization where we meet, share ideas when we learn about how we can help one another, and for the past two years I have been a head. So in Poland, the best university, Polish university, is in the capital. It's called Warsaw University. But it is very nice when the boss of the office from Warsaw calls me and says, hey boss, <laughs> because sometimes you know you are lucky and you're being called a boss for someone, a colleague, who is working for a university that is better than mine. But still, you know, I can look up and learn how to do it better from them. And that's the whole idea. So that's that. Can we move on? Now, the first picture that I, ch uh, that I chose for you is the picture that would uh, actually show what we care about, in our office at least. The picture shows uh, the main street in Łódź, which is called Piotrkowska Street, and on, on that street we have the students from our university from different cultures, because what we want to share with the local people with the, you, our students and our administration and everything, everybody around, we want to share that their diversity is very important, that diversity or being different is very beautiful because if everybody was the same, life would be very boring, right? So the more people you have of different culture, the better chance you have to learn how to respect another human being, how to communicate with them, how to find common grounds. And we all have the same things. We all have ears, nose, eyes, yes, hands, everything. We are human beings. I mean, we are different, but actually we are really the same. True? True. So finding this respect uh, is very important. So this is something that we value in the university. This is something that we are working on. And uh, that's why one of the goals that we have, and my boss, big boss, the president of the university, is very fond of having more international students and having them uh, get really good education with our university. Uh, 
Now, let me explain one thing. In India, the most important person in the university is a chancellor, right? In Poland, that person is called president, president or rector. Yes, that's the main important, the, like the professor who is a professor, real professor, and he's like the head of the whole university. He has usually four or five vice presidents. Now, my direct boss is the vice president in charge of international relations. Okay, so he's my boss. Now, with the administration, the top guy is called chancellor. But chancellor is below the president. He answers to the president. So president makes decisions with the vice president. Chancellor is like the executive person who puts it into action. Yes? So basically, I have many bosses. <laughs> I have chancellor, I have president, I have vice president, but only that. <laughs> after that, after the vice president, I'm okay. Then other people have to call me boss. I'm making fun of this, but because obviously I am just Liliana, right? And in my life, my role is to be the head of the office, but just, that's just my role. At night, I'm not the head of the office. Can we move forward? Now, some geography for you. This is the world, and after, oh, I think it's, yeah, it's the world, and, oh, that was fast. I think Europe got sca skipped. Uh, this is just Poland, and it shows in, in almost in the middle of its watch. Warsaw, the capital, is a little bit to the, to the right, to the east. Now, to the left of Poland, we border with Germany. To the south, we border with Czech Republic. To the east, we border with Ukraine, Belarus, Lithuania, and Russia, a little bit. So this is how we are. And at the top, we have uh, the sea, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. So those are our neighboring countries. Now, in Europe, Poland, in European Union, because we are part of European Union, is at the very end of European Union. After that, the countries be to the east are not part of it, except, of course, Lithuania and Latvia and Estonia, which are up, up north. Can we move on, please? So basic data. Some people are very surprised because Europe as such is not a big, big really place, right? I think India in size might be bigger than Europe, right? Probably. So imagine India, it's huge, right? And Europe, so many countries, smaller. But it's very similar to India, because in India, you go to another state, people speak different language, right? And so many languages, here at least. In Europe, each nation has a different language as well, just like in Poland. Our native language is Polish, and it is not an easy language. Let me tell you, it's quite hard, even for me, because grammar is very difficult. You have to remember how to finish the word correctly, or oh, it's, I can't even explain. You can learn quickly how to communicate basic stuff and, and just talk, but if you want to do literary work or scientific, then you would have to go into detail, it's, it's more difficult. But anyways, Polish language is the only official language in Poland, the only, okay? Uh, now, older people might speak, not English, but Russian. Why? Oh, it was not a part of Russia, never. It was, it was under Russia, that's true. <laughs> so our government was controlled by Russians, yes? The Russians, the army, Russian army was in Poland, that is true, they had their stations, but we were, we were a separate country all the time. But of course, because we were friends with Russians, so the most popular language taught at school was Russian. So even I speak some Russian, because when I was little, it was still like, it went, like when you were in Poland, I was, in, I was finishing my eight year you know, primary school, I was learning Russian for five years. Now, so older people don't speak English that much, maybe a little bit, some of them. But the new generation, the younger people, they have mostly English at school. So it's pretty much like in Kerala. Some people speak better English, some people speak 
a little bit less of the, that language. But the main communication language is Polish. Now, also the currency. Some people think, okay, we are part of European Union. Maybe you have Euro. No, we don't have Euro. Hopefully, I hope personally that it will never happen because it's nice to have your own currency, right? You have your own rupees with Mahatma Gandhi on every bill, right? It's nice. But in Poland, we have our own currency right now. It's Zloty. Uh, we are the part of European Union for the last, for the last, how is it, 14 years. Now, there has been, there has been very good ideas about being part of Europe. With that, you know, the communication between countries really started getting much better. Before, when we went to Germany or some other countries, I had to have a visa, passport, then I could go. Right now, I take my little ID and drive. From Łódź to, to Berlin, I can drive within five hours on the highway. Now, when I drive there, on the border, nobody even stops. You just drive. Sometimes, of course, there are some events that they, they wave and ask somebody to stop. But the last times I was there, nobody even noticed driving. So this is what happens in Europe, you know, that all those countries are open and it's possible to just, you know, travel. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because it's exactly the same for the students. Because most of the students, when they apply for studies, get accepted, and when they get a visa to Poland, most of them get a visa D, which is for student, and most of them get Schengen visa, which means that with that same visa, you can travel all over Europe, except, I think, Lux Luxembourg, uh, Switzerland, and United Kingdom. United Kingdom was never a part of Schengen. They like to check everybody and have visa. This is what they like. I don't know why. We'll see how long it lasts. We are not going there. <laughs> now, there are a lot of other interesting countries as well. Now, uh, what should I say more about that? I think uh, the good things, let me, let me tell you this. As far as the European Union, the good things that happened for Poland is that European Union uh, sponsors or finances quite a lot of different projects, like building highways, like uh, renovating some, some facilities around, like giving some beautiful programs like Erasmus Plus that I'll be talking about in a moment. And those are the good things, but of course it's never for free because when somebody gives you money, they always want something. So something that happened in Poland was that the Western countries overtook the food industry in Poland, pretty much. Not saying 100%, but there is more and more packaged food. I mean, why would Poland need food from France that is actually grown in Africa? You know what I mean? So my food, I, when I buy it in the store, I don't know where this fruit comes from. It says it's produ produced, produ pro uh, produ uh, how do I say, produced, produced in, in European Union. I don't know where, yes? But I'm saying, you know, things happen, change, you know, you need to be aware of what's happening. Now, what I noticed about Kerala is that you have a lot of processed food too, but you have a lot of fresh food too, okay? So just enjoy it, never give it up. Don't give up your food, ever. Now, Poland as and the cities. The first biggest city, of course, is Warsaw, which is the capital. The second biggest one is Krakow, which used to be a capital, but the, th but the third biggest city in Poland is Łódź. Now, when I travel to different countries and I ask people about Poland, some people know where Poland is. Most people don't, okay? When somebody was Catholic and I say po John Paul II, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they remember it's Poland, right? For some countries I go and I say Lewandowski, you know, the footballer. I say, yes, we know, okay? So it's good to have famous people to sort of re tell them where I come from or where I was brought up, actually. Now, also Chopin, Kiri Skłodowska Kiri, I like her because she was the first lady, first woman, who received a Nobel Prize. You heard about that, Nobel Prize? First lady, 
a hundred years ago she received I think two Nobel Prizes in chemistry yeah so and she was Polish I know the French want to like to say that oh no no she was French oh no no she was Polish she married a French guy and she worked in Paris that's true but she was totally Polish okay all right and the academics oh wait 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 Sona go back okay thank you look how many uh, higher education schools we have almost 400 is it a lot or not it's a lot for a country like Poland because the population of Poland is like population of Kerala can you imagine yes it's almost not cities the population of country Poland 38 million how many people we have here 38 million right so Kerala is like Poland in number of people okay one for one. <laughs> so for, for 38 million people, we have almost 400 uh, high, uh, high level, you know, educational schools. That's a lot, I think. Now the ministry is trying to cut down of, on the number of students by saying this. You, when you teach, you should have maximum ratio, one teacher, 13 students. So we are going to be ad adjusting to the program. In your University of Lodz, I think we have one, per, one professor to 15. For, for the ministry, it's too many, but we'll see how it goes. Now, out of 400, 258 are private. Let me stop for a second here to explain also a difference. Now, in Kerala, when I notice, when a school is private, those private schools, some of them are very good. In Poland, most of the private schools, no good. In Poland, private schools is like, give me the money, I'll give you a diploma. If you pay more, I'll give you two diplomas. Or maybe you want five diplomas. Okay, you know what I mean? It's not a good um, choice to pick on private schools because they really, for most of the time, don't care much about the level of education. Of course, I'm misjudging some of them because there is a couple. There's a couple of very good private schools uh, based mostly in Warsaw, and they are very good and accredited internationally. But apart from that, like in the city of Łódź, there's, there are also private schools, and they are not that good. Now, the University of Łódź is a, a state-owned public university, or you can call it here a government. Yes, government university. No private funding everything comes from the government which is good and bad right but our direct boss is the prime minister of the government and within that we have the ministry of science and higher education and the and the minister over there is actually a vice premier also so he the deputy premier and he also is our our boss now we can move on thank you uh, do you know this beautiful lady? She's my assistant today, <laughs> Sona. She's doing a good job. Anyway, very quickly, uh, which is the capital of the region, of course. It, it got its ri uh, city rights in 1423, but it was a small city. It was never a big one. But uh, sometime 150, 130 years ago, something happened. Yeah? It, it was like some cities in China now, yeah? There was nothing and all of a sudden they start building factories, factories and people from all over would come to work in the factories. Some people like making business. So 150 years ago, all, this all started. So Wuch was famous in Europe. Tsar from Russia was buying the army uniforms. B son in, in Wuj brought to Russia. The French king, the same. The, the new stylish, you know, clothes were created in Łódź. So Łódź was famous in Europe. Is it known now? Uh -uh. <laughs> no, because that industry finished at the beginning of, tw of 20s. Uh, I mean, it didn't finish, but at least the, the high, high production sort of finished after the uh, revolution in Russia. Because, you know, Tsar no longer got the uniforms from Łódź. So business went down. Politics, right? Politics is very important. But anyways, it's the fourth uh, largest city by, by area, right? 
uh, and it was a textile uh, city or also cinematography industry center. So which means that in Łódź there's a big production of films and I know that you like films here in India. But here you have very long movies, three hours, come on, how can you watch a movie for three hours long? I mean, in, in Europe when, they, when we make movies it's usually an hour and a half maximum, sometimes two hours. And they, when they make a movie for two hours, they say, oh, it's too long. <laughs> so it, it's also a cultural difference, right? But I also, you know, your movies are becoming popular in Poland too and in Europe. So, you know, I don't know what you did, but something works. Uh, today it's a cultural, industrial and academic center. And let me tell you that uh, in Łódź we have 700,000 people. Yes, 700,000 people. Now, when the students come to, to Łódź, it's always 100,000 people more. When they go for vacations, the city is, yeah, it's sad, <laughs> it's sad. Also, let me tell you about the safety. Europe has become also a very strange place, right? Because we, we are, we've been hearing stories about terrorist attacks, yes? We've been hearing stories about some really upsetting, I don't know, situations happening here and there. I always keep saying and, you know, like, do not get, uh, how you call it, affected too much by the news. And we need to understand that things like that always happened, always. Right? The, the only danger that we have now is to accuse others of doing something without even knowing them. We don't know who did this stuff, but it's so easy to say, oh yeah, it's a person from, I don't know, Afghanistan or some, you know what I mean? And then everybody's thinking, oh, Afghanistan it must be a bad country. No, I know a lot of people from Afghanistan that are very nice people, you know what I mean? We need to be very careful about that. But because of those tensions, and I think a number of also immigrants from different countries in other countries of European Union, some of those countries are considered dangerous right now. To the, to the point where I read a recent, a recent studies that Poland has become a tourist destination more. Because people pick Poland as a, a safe destination for traveling more often than other countries. It is strange to me, but it's not strange because Poland is a safe, it is a safe place. But you need to understand one thing. Poland is like predominant, it's boring. It's boring because it's, everybody is white, okay? To me, oh my God, everybody is the same. I like, you know, people being different. I like people speaking different languages. But majority of people are Polish Polish, you know? Even here you speak different dialects sometimes, right? But in Poland, it's just this Polish language and maybe a little bit different from different parts. But it's, people are very much the same. Majority of them are Catholic, yes, or if they practice, they definitely go to church. Some, some people are just Catholic because they were born Catholic and automatically became Catholic. So also a lot of changes, a lot, a lot of young people don't go to church much. I'm not here to judge if it's good or bad, but you know, different things happen. But it's good to uh, sort of know. Uh, new infrastructure. Because of the European Union money, there has been new projects going on. Uh, one of those was this building that is visible on that, that, is, that can be seen on that uh, picture in that picture, and that, that is a new railway station. It's huge. It's way too big, I would say, even, but it's pretty nice. It's, uh, I think, the biggest right now railway station in that part of the world. Now, to travel from capital city he, to Łódź, it takes an hour and 20 minutes by train. Trains are very often because people from Warsaw travel to Łódź to work and, and, and the other way around. So a lot of people choose to live in Łódź because it's cheaper. For example, I'm renting a place in Łódź and if I wanted to rent such a place in Warsaw, in, in the same distance from the city center, I would pay at least twice as much. So the standard of living is close, but the pricing is 
just different. So I think it's, it's normal always. The capital city is always the most e expensive. But it is also true that the biggest Hindu community is in Warsaw. It is, the, it is in Warsaw, but it's uh, growing, I think, part, part, you know, in every city in Poland. So I think it's, uh, it's the direction that we are going. Very often, and even in our university, we had visits of the uh, Indian ambassador. The, the last one was a lady. The, the, um, right now there is a man, and this man, I met him at least twice on different events. They are doing, there is more and more business going on between Poland and India. I personally know a few people in Poland, some people in Poland who are from India who are doing business. My first boss in Łódź was from Kerala. Can you imagine? Funny, huh? And I was like wondering, I even wrote to him today on Facebook, why did you, why did you change Kerala for Warsaw? Because it's so beautiful here and he said, why, life. But it's life and wife, because he married a Polish girl, so he moved to, to Warsaw. So that's the, the situation right now. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Thank you. Yes, let me quickly just say that before the Second World War, which was very multicultural, and the four nations that were, were predominant there were German, Russian, Jewish, and Polish. So if you come, or when you come to Łódź, you will see huge legacy, especially of Jewish um, tradition and culture. After the Second World War, the Jewish community obviously went down drastically, but it still exists. It's a center of Poland. It's very easy to travel by car as well. For example, if, if Sujin comes to Poland, if he asks me, Liliana, can you get me at the airport? I get into my car, one hour, 15 minutes, I'm at the airport. It's very convenient. Right now, it's just highways. Before, before we had like here, two-way roads, and from one city to another. I, when I wanted to drive to the sea, I would drive for like six hours, really. And it's only like 350 kilometers, yet so many hours, right? Now, after they build the highways, you get on a on a bus or you get on a, a you know in, into a car, and I drive here for three hours. I'm at, at the sea. I drive three hours south. I'm in the mountains because Poland has both the sea and the mountains, and also beautiful lake areas. Um, okay, I already spoke about that. Uh, important events and festivals. Now I have a, a lot of friends who come to watch for concerts. So there are famous, you know, musicians coming to Łódź to give concerts, but I myself, I'm not very fond of crowds, so I never go. But I just hear because somebody says, can I stay at your place because I have a concert and stuff. So people come all over. The same with uh, huge matches of vo volleyball. Do you know volleyball? Do you play here? Yeah? So volleyball team in Poland is very popular. Just like football team, volleyball team. So volleyball matches happen there quite a lot. Uh, and also, you know, here it's, it's very difficult to compare Polish cities to Kerala because it is a European city and we have four seasons. We have summer and our summers are not like here. Lower temperature, okay? Sometimes 33 or 35 degrees but dry, okay? But not very often. In Poland, when the temperature gets 33, my chancellor administration boss calls and says, okay, tell your people they can go home. <laughs> really, it's too hot. Because here you have hot and you have air conditioning, yes? In Poland, it's hardly ever hot, so there is no air conditioning really, just in stores. People don't use it because there's no need. Why would I get the air conditioning for one week in summer? You understand? It doesn't, it doesn't work. But on the other hand, after summer, we have autumn, we have fall. In the fall, it starts getting cold. Yes, you start st wearing jacket, different shoes, no shorts, okay? I'm saying this because sometimes when, you know, some students from here come and they're wearing shorts and I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm, go and dress, you know, because you will get sick very quickly. So the weather gets really cold. The trees, start changing color 
and they start falling. Once they fall, it's already winter. When winter comes, we quite often have snow. Snow is cold. When it freezes, it's ice. So no shorts, no sandals. You have to have jackets and even hats or anything on the head, really. So we have snow. Then we have spring. Springs are beautiful because everything comes back to life. Yes? Now, but if somebody loves green like here all the time, you will not find it in Poland. It's only in spring, summer, and then a little bit in autumn. And then we have winter. Okay? No green stuff. Just to let you know. Uh, yes, that's it. Let's move on. Quickly about the university. Uh, it was founded after the Second World War in 45. Uh, before that, we had some uh, institutions of higher sort of education, but they were not called universities. Now, after the Second World War, they created a being called University of Łódź. Now, right now, from this University of Łódź, which still exists, exists, and I work there, but from that university, there were other universities to sprung. The Technical University of Łódź, Medical University of Lodge and Academy of Art. Okay, they were all part of University of Lodge. Now they are separate universities in which also public, also public. And there was also a film school. And if somebody, if someone, someone likes European movies, some of the very famous Polish actors and directors were studying in which, just like Roman Polanski. Have you heard that name, Polanski? No, you did, because he was in the newspaper. <laughs> yeah, you Americans. He's a good guy. He was crazy, though, but he's, you know, yeah. But he is a, a very good director. He made very famous movies, uh, I think. And also very good. He gave a chance to a lot of good actors to, to come to be and, 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 and music. Now, as I said before, we are state, public, or government university, yes? And uh, we have 12 faculties. Uh, that's the number, over 2,000 of academic staff and uh, about 32,000 students. And the number has been dropping because that's, perp uh, that's done on purpose. We want to cut down on the number. But then again, uh, when I talk to the uh, president, I'm making sure that you know, cutting down on the number of students doesn't mean cutting down to, open, you know, to opening the doors to international students. So they want to balance that as well. And the number of international students, it's uh, about 2,300. Is it much? It's not really that much. For a Polish university, it's a lot, because we are very new to uh, inviting international students. Uh, for my staff in my office, it is a lot, you know? Because when I started working, we had maybe 500 of them together. And that was easy because I almost remember everybody. You know, I knew where they, where they came from. Some of them I knew the names. Right now with this number, they all know me, but I, I can't remember everyone. It's difficult. Maybe it's good to, for your memory, but it's not easy to remember. Hmm? This is uh, just an example of uh, the new identification we are trying to make with our university. Some of the people say it's new branding. Because uh, uh, maybe I'll show it on here, if I can. See this? It looks weird, huh? But this is actually you. This is actually L. Łódź, University of Łódź. But the concept was about this arrow here. This arrow shows the future. This arrow shows, you know, we are open for the new. We want to see our career going certain way. Yeah? This is the whole idea behind that. And now when we were changing this two years ago, a lot of professors said, you're kidding. No, <laughs> we are not going to do that. We are not going to change into that. But we want to be a progressive, modern university. We want to break the rules. We don't want to be boring. Because young people, they need to find something interesting as well. Education is not only about educating, you know, with the books. It's about life. It's about, you know, perception of how to live your life. It's about, you know, creating certain atmosphere, you know? And that's what we've been working on. 
and that's why you will see on the left a professor that's a professor of English philology a very good one and he he he's in our posters as you know as part of us right and it says free your mind uvolni umysł then the next one to the top the girl from Africa also taking part in our photo session also right now a well-known uh, person in Poland because she started uh, after she got her bachelor degree last year she started acting in, uh, in TV series can you believe that and it's really funny because she she my mother I I introduced her to my mother once and then my mother there calls me and she says you know what Divine is on TV <laughs> and we find out that she's already making you know a TV career the guy at the bottom uh, is the guy from it's Carlos from Spain he was an Erasmus student exchange and the girl to the right she's just you know one of administration employees so we are going to we are trying to show that we, there is a variety a diversity of people working at the university uh, of which which doesn't mean that we are you know so much different we are just different but really having the same goal to be, to work professionally for the university of Lodz to to serve to serve others let's move on yes this i have to have a little bit of introduction like a lot of universities especially in the states or in uk or in australia they have started the whole idea of rankings and and internationalizations decades decades ago so they are way ahead of us now in poland for many years uh, the universities didn't care about rankings about giving any data about sharing anything hello it was also you know something that was kind of like oh we are not doing this this is just you know not important we are better than that for years now after a few years they realized that if you're not in the rankings then nobody knows about you okay in Polish rankings people know University of Lodz everybody knows the University of Lodz but outside Poland how would you know about University of Lodz so just recently we have started you know putting some data here and there in the rankings even though it is not necessarily in the same methodology of the rankings want because whoever is making the rankings they use their own methodology so will never be at the very top really but we are definitely among the four, for the polish six universities that are even present in the those rankings the world rankings but we are working on that could we move on there are some other rankings i will not go in there but as far as polish universities as of now we are the sixth uh, uh, university in poland public university in poland it is it is changing each year of course because there's a lot of competition uh, but basically warsaw and krakow have the i would say the most sponsored universities in Poland they will always be the best because that's the government idea so there's also politics involved in that but we are there uh, the the first place for faculties we have and we are very proud of is the faculty of uh, law and administration especially tax law and European Union law they are very professional having a lot of uh, research going on but unfortunately they do not teach in English you can always study in Polish but I don't know and uh, just recently the faculty of management uh, that offers business management program bachelor and master degree as well as uh, management and financial no management and finance I think yes they uh, they got the second place in Poland being the second best faculty of management in Poland so very high standards so if any of you think about studying business management which is a very interesting uh, direction uh, I would say that to study and finish the first semester at this course is not easy so it's totally for somebody who is really devote, devoted to studying it's not it's not easy but it's possible I know that let's move on yes then uh, 
just one slide to show you one aspect of the University of Lodz. We have a lot of different departments doing a lot of different things. But one of the interesting centers is the Center of Innovation uh, of Technology Transfer. Now, they are taking care of patents, they are taking care of research, but aside from that, they are also taking care of contacting the business area, you know, businesses and, 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 and also with the career center, kind of searching and looking around in the city, how we can cooperate with the outside, you know, world, with the companies. Also, so we can produce, you know, and, and offer such courses and programs that would be welcomed in the in the society now as we all know like five years ago or ten years ago w you know we wouldn't even expect there would be some jobs like n we have right now like people s sitting on uh, facebook and just putting some data on or some uh, some ads or something i mean the world has been changing very quickly right very quickly and we don't know what's going to happen in five years. Maybe even now you study something and then in five years, 10 years, well, you'll, you'll be thinking about re, you know, relearning something, learning something more because the, there will be not be a need for that. For example, myself, when I, I studied actually English philology, when I was studying English philology in Poland, I got job everywhere. I got jobs and they were killing to get me to work there because I was good and I was like, okay, this one, this one, maybe that one, right? And I really enjoyed that. Then I went to California for seven years where I just practically used the language, but I was doing other stuff. I was getting my experience, right? When I came back to Poland, I realized there's a lot of English teachers. And now you cannot, I mean, there's such a big competition that, you know, they don't care anymore. If not me, next person, you know what I mean? So I was teaching a little bit, and then I decided maybe something different should, should happen with my life. So I opened my eyes and said, yes, God, help me out. I want something that would be interesting to do in my life. And I found the job that I have right now. And I'm very happy with this. So you need to pray more. Then if you pray, I guess I'm sure you'll find something that you would love. And never get stuck with one idea. Because if it's something is, if something you feel is not correct, then there are only two solutions, in, in my opinion. One, you're not listening to the feedback you're getting, and maybe you should be changing something in your life. And second, maybe it's not the place for you, so you should make a change and move to another one and do something else. I mean, you have to be careful in life, right, with those decisions. Thank you. Very quickly, how many of you heard about a program, European Union program called Erasmus? Anyone? No one? Oh my goodness, you are too far. <laughs> now, we have Erasmus that right now also spread uh, all over the world. Uh, even uh, I have cooperation with a couple of uh, universities in India, up north, where we have some student and staff exchange within Erasmus+. Plus. Erasmus+, Plus is a scholarship program that is financed by European Union they give large amounts of money to European universities so they can pay a student or a professor or someone ad from administration to go to another university in European Union, another country, so they can learn, so they can study, so they can kind of get feedback or communicate how they can better their jobs. Now, Polish universities have changed a lot since then. Because when we entered the program, we were at a totally different place. Right now, after 14 years, when we started with eight students going abroad and almost nobody coming to visit, yes? And now we have over a thousand students coming to visit to us for you know a semester or two, there's a huge change. But wh why am I saying this to you? I'm saying this to you because if you become a student in Poland and you study some program, after you finish the first semester, you can apply for a possibility to go to another country for one semester or two semester study. So you do not stop your studies, right? 
you apply and you go for one semester, you pick same subjects that you have in Poland and you re just do them in another country. And what's more, you're getting money for that. You're getting about 500 euro per, per month to go to another country. How nice, huh? Come to study in my university and then go. <laughs> no, but I really honestly think that if a young person starts studying, it's, and especially in a foreign country, just like, for example, Poland, it would be great to experience yet another country. Some of students from India that I have decide to, for example, work part-time in Łódź while studying. Some of them decide to continue working in the companies in Łódź after the study. Some of them move to Warsaw and work in Warsaw. Some of them move to other cities. But some of them decide to go to another country to work. Now, it's all possible, but it's very good to think before you make a decision. If you decide to move from Poland to Germany, you need to know the German reality, yes? So if you have a dream that you would want to work in Spain, work in Germany or France, how about you come to Poland, study, it's way cheaper, right? You go for a visit for one semester to study there, see how you like it, even look around if there's any possibilities for you to find job, and come back and make a decision. Because a lot of people have dreams, but they have to think if it's really even realistic. Now, in Germany, people, of course, they earn better money, yes? Because Germany has been a part of Western world for always, right? After the war, unlike Poland. But the difference is that you earn more money, but you also spend more money because the standards of living there are more expensive, yes? So it's a choice that you make. It's, it's not better, it's not worse, it's a choice. Uh, anyway, so if you become a student at our university, I would personally be convincing you to go to another country. I'll just quickly tell you about one girl from West Bengal. She came to study, and after a semester she came, she said she wants to go United Kingdom because her uncle is there. And I said, okay, so let's check what faculty, uh, what faculty agreements we have, what, what universities, and she found it. And she, uh, she, I think she was in Lanchester, I can't remember exactly, but she spent one semester in Great Britain. After that, she came back, so she experienced two countries. When I last see, saw her, she was finishing her last examination saying she's finishing her a master degree and I asked her, okay, so what do you do now, Manju? And she says, I'm looking for a job. So she wants to stay. I was surprised because the lady's almost my age, she's like 40, yes? I was thinking she would want to go back home, but she wants to try and work in Poland. So let me say about the job opportunities quickly. As a student, you're able to work in Poland. Okay, once you receive a student ID, employers like you because you, as a student, are, is, you are very precious to them because the companies pay less taxes when they employ students. You know that? Yeah. It's the same here? No, but in Poland it's like that. The companies, oh yeah, I like you, student, because okay, he can employ you, pay less, even pay you more, and less taxes to the government, okay? But I will suggest one thing. First of all, for very ambitious work for companies like Fujitsu, Infosys or anything, yeah, when you know English is pretty much okay, yes? But you have to be really ready for that. You have to really sacrifice a lot and show how good you are for, to, for, to continue working with them, right? Of course, there are other jobs, but I, I must be honest with you that with a lot of jobs, they would expect you to know a little bit of Polish to communicate with some people who don't. So what I always suggest to people coming is this. Two reasons to focus on studying the first semester especially is this. Number one, get some Polish. In, um, some of the faculties have Polish language as a, as, a, as a foreign language. Or just be with Polish people, learn something, you know. You need to kind of find out how to come in. And you will, you will, you will learn quickly, I think. Second of all, and it's most important, is that first semester is always the most difficult at the university. Always. Always. 
So if you already took so much energy to apply, to spend the money, to get a visa, and it's not always easy, right? Then to fly, invest so much money to be in, in, you know, in another country, why waste it on some you know, small job and not get through the first semester? Because at the University of Lodz, the professors are serious. Okay? If you do not come to classes, if you do not do the things according to what they w wish, you will not survive the first semester. And if you don't survive the first semester, you're no longer a student, which means you are no longer eligible to be in the country with the D visa, which is a student visa, you understand? So I say that, and this is also requested by the Polish government, that some, if somebody comes to study in, in Poland, they're supposed to be financially uh, prepared to, for the studies. They should have money secured for their life in Poland. And that is actually a very good idea. Do not try or attempt to do the things like you come and you say, oh, I had one situation like that. A student came to me and said, I have only 1,000 zloty in my pocket, which is like 200 euro, 250. And I said, oh, what now? <laughs> and he was saying that he doesn't have any money because some agency told him that if he comes to Poland, he will get a job like that. And what now? He was sitting there, I was really feeling sorry for him. What to do? And he wanted to move to Warsaw to work. And I said, listen, but if you, want, if you go to Warsaw to work, I would have to you know, inform uh, some department that you are no longer with us. I mean, you have to be careful. And then finally, w we, we managed to, to, to connect him with another guy from India, and he started helping out with the, in the restaurant, right? But you know what, that, that is a dangerous thing to do like that. You have to have enough finances when you come to Poland, at least at the very beginning. So, and I saw a lot of students who started working very quickly and put their energy into work, not into the studies. And also, goodbye. Because if you don't pass the first semester, you finish the studies. You have to retake again or you have to submit your documents again for the next year. So that's the reality. But jobs are there, okay? And most of the students who really want to work, they do. They do. Is it, is it like, oh, everybody is just waiting for you to come and, and work? No. Of course you have to stand up for yourself, you have to write a CV, you have to talk to people, you have to gain experience. It's like everywhere, yes? But when I go into the city, most, most of the times I see students working in different services. This is, this is the reality, young people work a lot. Uh, okay, well, let me just mention maybe some uh, words that we got, like good university, good job accreditation that we got. That means that our graduates are welcomed on the uh, job market in Poland. Uh, also, employee-friendly employee accreditation, which is the accreditation that we got and an award for the fact that our university is very friendly for its own people, like me, for example. But so there are kindergartens for our staff. There is high school. Uh, there is also a British school for kids of businessmen in po in Łódź. For example, if you sir became a, a businessman in Łódź, and you came with your little daughter and wife and you would want to send your daughter to the English school, so meaning school with English language, the school is provided by our university. Okay, so we have many different levels for little kids. So we have actually connections with a lot of businessmen from different countries because they send their children to our school at the university. So this is also a way of making business with the, uh, with the business uh, uh, environment. Let's move on. I really like this picture and that's why I put it here. This is the picture that we did a long time ago with the students from different countries, also our students, also on Piotrkowska Street. But the interesting fact was that Polish Ministry of uh, Science and Higher Education decided that is, it's a very good picture to show the internationalization of Pol Poland and Polish universities. So what signal does it give you? The signal is that the ministry wants wants international students in Poland. They are, we are opening the doors for that fact. 
I, I know that for sure because I've been talking to the minister recently as well about that. I even wrote a letter about a different situation, also about the visa applications in India. Uh, we have been trying as a country to really make it better and more open, but we are in the process. Uh, it's a uh, yeah. It's 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 it's. Been, this picture has been appearing also on the uh, magazines when you fly to one country in Europe from one country to another. So some students open the magazine and say, "Oh wow, my face is there," because the ministry is using now this picture because we allowed them to. Let's move on. The faculty is very quickly. Now the first one I think is the Faculty of Biology and Environmental Protection and uh, this faculty uh, has something, some program, Mundus program in ecohydrology. So it's the science of water, how to keep water, how to retain water, there's a lot of stuff going on and very good professors working there. Faculty of Chemistry, they do not offer anything in English but they are very good as well. We have uh, very good cooperation with German uh, universities but I really don't remember the field of research they are doing. It's way too complicated for my mind. Faculty of Economics and Sociology, this faculty uh, offers economics bachelor and uh, master's degree. It's the biggest, uni sorry, the biggest faculty in our university, it is 8,000 uh, uh, students. So they, and, and also quite a lot of international students. Uh, Faculty of Philology. Philology is like languages, learning languages. So if somebody, for example, wants to study English degree, English language uh, on a master's degree, it's possible. It's uh, very difficult, in my opinion. But it's, it's definitely possible, and we had some students from India entering the, this program. Uh, Faculty of Philosophy and History, nothing in English, and I don't think there is any need. Not many, not many students want to study history of Poland, right? <laughs> or the world, because history is very dangerous, you know? Depend who is writing the book, right? I mean, probably the, you know, the British have different version of uh, history of India, and you have a different one, right? So, same in Poland, you know, it changes. Uh, faculty of Physics and Applied Informatics, uh, that's a very good uh, faculty. Not too many students go there because it's quite difficult with the physics in Poland. Uh, so the interest in that is dropping. They offered nanotechnology, but this program is still in the offer, but uh, we haven't had a chance to open it because the number of interested students in that was not enough to open, to run it in English. Faculty of Geographic Sciences, same idea, I mean, how can you, I mean, we are not going to invite students to learn geography, right? I mean, also something like history, I would say, more connected to the local area. Faculty of Educational Sciences, they teach future teachers. So this is basically their goal, and psychology. Now, um, Faculty of Law and Administration, I just mentioned, it's quite good, nothing in English. Uh, Faculty of International and Political Studies, very interesting, especially if somebody doesn't like mathematics. Because that faculty teaches future diplomats. A lot of students from there go on different internships in embassies, yes, even when, let's say, there is a Chinese student studying there, they have internship in Chinese embassy in Warsaw. They are teaching those soft skills of the politics, how it runs, the history, what to be afraid of, what not to be afraid of, about the current situation in the world, meaning, you know, the tensions concerning, concerning uh, terrorism. They are trying to, like, give the future leaders some ideas how to how to be in the world how to how to manage and I, I find it very interesting they have two specializations that I really enjoy one is called uh, it's called uh, Asian studies and I think it's uh, it's interesting because they do teach Chinese as well there and I think that Poland is on the this Silk Route to, uh, to, 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 to Europe and uh, China is looking at Poland as the, you know, like, uh, like a, 
like a point to, to move to the Western world. So it's dangerous, I think, but it is happening. It is happening. And uh, one more thing is for security studies. Security studies, it's a specialization where they focus on the current, you know, difficulties that we are facing with the, you know, the world being safe and what we can do. Uh, and the last one on my list here is the Faculty of Management. It's the last here, but actually I think it's the, as far as the quality of teaching, I think I missed something. Yeah, I think, I, I'll tell you. What? Oh, thank you. She's listening. Thank you. <laughs> I know what I missed. But anyway, Faculty of Management is the very high quality of teaching. Business management program, the top of the top. I mean, it's very hard to get there. It's not very hard, it's hard, but it's very hard to survive. But once you survive the first semester, you are dealing with this happily. But it's, it's, it, it gives, it, this is for ambitious people who like to think. This is uh, for ambitious people who like to argue and uh, with the professor who want to show that they know something. This is not a program for someone who is trying to avoid the sight of the professor like they don't exist, okay? Like over there, you would have to be become very brave talking to professors. It doesn't matter how they look, okay? You need to talk. And uh, Faculty of Mathematics and Computer Science. This, uh, this one I forgot. It's the second favorite for, uh, for, for our university, computer science. This program involves quite a lot of mathematics. So I would strongly suggest that if somebody doesn't like mathematics, that's not, that's not the, the direction, okay? But if you like mathematics, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. And students who are studying computer science, they always get some part job working for someone, you know. It's, it's, it's a nice job, actually, because you can do it from ev anywhere, right? With a computer. Yeah, thank you. Very quickly, we have over 250 uh, partner in institutions uh, abroad, meaning different universities we cooperate with all over the world, including India, of course, possibly more in the future. Uh, but we are still learning about our systems. Our diplomas are recognized in, in the world, in Europe. It's like, it doesn't matter if you have a Polish uh, diploma, bachelor degree, or German one, it's on the same level, okay? So that's something that secures uh, the future for someone who wants to uh, work at the university, or not at the university, work at other jobs in Europe. Now, honoris causa, honoris causa doctorate. I don't know how to explain that to you. It's like this honorary award that you give to some professor or some person because they did something excellent. So a, a group of professors gather and they decide, sir, because you have been such a good person, or you did something, I don't know what, but something awesome, right? You are receiving this honorary recognition. And then they invite such a person asking if, if he's willing to accept such a, such a uh, you know, award from the university. And we had some famous people getting it in our university, including Ma Margaret Thatcher and uh, Jose Manuel Barroso, who was the president of uh, European Commission for, for years. Probably you don't know him here, yes? You probably know some other people, but in Europe he was quite popular. He was the head of the whole you know, European Union for years. Uh, we've got the mayor of New York also on our list. How sweet, yeah. Umberto Eco, uh, I don't know if you like literature, he, he was a novelist. He got, uh, he got his uh, uh, doctorate from us three years ago. And I think three years ago he died. So it was the last chance for us. Uh, Andrzej Wajda, a Polish director. Those are just few of the people that that we give those. This is just to show you that you know we are not a small university just kind of hiding somewhere. We do have a lot of interesting people entering, giving lectures. This is something we are going to, uh, this is the direction we are de definitely taking. English taught studies. I've been already saying that we are trying to adjust to the changing labor market. It's not easy, but we are trying to do that. Uh, I already said uh, that the diplomas are recognized in Europe and in the world. I think uh, most of the stuff I already mentioned, but uh, 
economics, linguistic and legal sciences, those are the, like, some people will say those are the, the, the ones that are most uh, excelling in our school. This is something, an option for someone who, for example, would see Poland as a place to live. We have so-called uh, Polish language school for foreigners, the biggest school and the oldest like that in Poland. And in that school, there are over, over 500 students from all over the world who come to study our language. It's also called a foundation year. If you study this for nine months and you pass the final examinations, with the language certificate you can apply to any university in Poland. It's an open door. So some people pick that and they like that. Let's move on. Now, if somebody invests in Polish, there are, of course, more options for studying. But as I said, Polish is not necessarily the easiest language in the world. But it's possible for people to, to learn, of course, and I'm some, sometimes surprised that somebody is able to learn Polish in six, uh, sorry, not six, nine months, really. I'm surprised and shocked. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. Some, some nations have very good ear of learning, and they learn very quickly. Very, very, very interesting. Uh, we do cooperate with, uh, uh, with a lot of business entities, uh, which means that in our classrooms we invite not only the theoretical professors who would be giving their sometimes unrealistic theories of life, but we invite the practical side, meaning the people who work in business, who also share the, 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 their side of the story. So, uh, of course, it's not happening in every classroom because it can, it's just not possible, but definitely business management, economics, they are doing that. They are like showing what, what or how it looks from the business or company's side. Let's move on. The offer. I already a little bit spoke about that and I think there are like pieces of paper that we brought uh, on which you can find the courses that are available. But very quickly again, on bachelor degree we have business management, then we have computer science, economics, math uh, financial mathematics. Oh my goodness, this is, you know, this is just for someone who really likes mathematics. Then uh, international and political studies and the specializations I mentioned, American studies, security studies, politics and policy in Europe, international communication or Asian studies. Also, uh, international marketing, marketing and management and finance. This is the offer of the bachelor degree. As you can see, it's, we are not a technical university. So if somebody is into engineering, that's not our university, right? Just to, for you to, to, to kind of take a notice. Move on to, please, to the next one. On master's degree, on master's degree, you will have similar courses, a little bit less fewer of them, but uh, if somebody studies on the b bachelor degree and they want to proceed with the master's degree, they have a chance most of the time to, to finish that. Now, of course, we have, I think the majority of students from other countries are coming to study bachelor degree. Bache bachelor degree studies are, f th sorry, three years long in Poland. How long are they in, in three? Also three? Yeah. Now in Poland to receive that you have three years as well. Then when you finish bachelor degree, the master's degree level is two years. Same? Okay, same. Good. So it's, let's move on. Required documents. Now, if, if any one of you, some of you, think about going to, actually I would say any university in Poland, but this is the requirement of ours. Usually there's some system in the internet where you have to do the application very carefully because this application, when you put the data, is kept later and this is the, 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 the you know, a way of us contacting you. Now I notice in India very often it's, it's a, it might be a better idea to use the help of somebody who knows what they are doing with the system. That's why we cooperate with the uh, life planner because they, we've already tested it with them. They know how it works. So it's, it's, it's much easier for a candidate to, uh, 
to apply on in the system if, if they have some help or somebody who knows what what needed and what needs to be done of course you need to have a secondary school certificate for the bachelor degree and you would have to have a diploma with a transcript of records so that your grades uh, to apply for one of those courses masters or bachelor in india i think there's an apostle right you do. yes apostle you don't know what it is oh you know oh you don't know what apostle is do you know no an apostle is how to say it an apostle is a stamp that you get on your legal documents hmm? like you in, 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 in notarized Yes, yes and no. In Europe it's a little bit different. Yes, it is a little bit different. But you can say it. It's like close to being notarized. But in here I think it's also getting the stamps from the ministry. Yes? Yes. Ministry of External Office. Basically what it means that in Poland we have one education system. You have here another, right? Now when people from India write and they upload a document with the document you know with their certificates diplomas for us it's like okay what does it mean is it real you know what i mean is it true maybe it's fake and believe me we had some situations not only you know from india but from all over that people uploaded some documents that of schools that never existed you know i mean they are trying their luck they are trying their luck and there are thousands of, of them trying you know, to enter. Now, you need to have those stamps. Also, your secondary uh, I wanted to finish. Why do we need that? We need that because later in Poland, we need to make sure that this document, the original that you bring, is a real document, yes? And the signature of ministry, uh, uh, Minister of Affairs, yes, Foreign Affairs, sometimes education, is needed for us to take it to a department of another ministry which gives you a document that says that your secondary school certificate is equal to Polish. And do I need it? Why do I need it? I need it because without this certification I cannot give you a diploma. Okay? So basically it is done to avoid problems with not uh, correct certification for example somebody writes to me that this diploma i say sir this is this diploma a diploma that allows you to study master's degree in in Pol uh, in in india yes 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 right and he's convincing everyone yes and later we find out that no you know what I mean? That's why the stamps need to be there for us to, to prove this. We have also a legibility statement, which is just a sentence saying that this secondary school certificate allows this person to enter bachelor degree studies in India. Okay? Or this bachelor degree diploma allows that person to enter master's degree in India. Just this and stamps. Okay? And that's it. Then we need English language certificate if you did not have schooling in English. But if you went to an English school and studied or learned in English, no certification is needed. Cover letter with, uh, written by a candidate. It is just pretty much like a letter that you would write about your, I would say, justification why you want to study this particular course. And it is important to write a very good cover letter because the teachers, or not the teachers, the professors who make a decision who is entering the, the, the program, they read those cover letters. Because in some, they don't, they don't examine, they just look through your grades, they look at the diploma, they read the cover letter, they might have some questions, but if they like all this, they say go. Few of the courses, they ask for Skype interviews. This is business management, management and finance, English philology on the master's degree. That's guaranteed that if you apply, they will ask for in Skype interview. They'll give you some questions and they'll be asking you questions. And if you answer correctly to the point, like it should be, I mean, you would show that you are thinking right that you know what you are talking about that you are really interested in this then no problem the problem is when 
the, the professor connects with you and asks you, why do you want to study business management? I like business. More, you know what I mean? And he said, why do you like business? Because I want to open my own business. Okay, you know what I mean? It's too short. A student sh should say, it has been, I don't know, my dream to open a business in the future. I've been interested in this, 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 this. I've done that, 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 right? I mean, you need to give as much as possible from yourself, right? When you talk to the professor. And definitely, I know it's not easy, but try not to be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. You can always close the computer, right? No, the professors are quite polite, so it's not a, it's not a problem to have a Skype interview. Uh, health uh, insurance policy, very important, and I would uh, say that, that when you are in Europe, you should have a current health insurance. You never know what, what can happen, right? I had situations where students got sick, were in the hospital, and if you don't have insurance, later you have to pay for that. And it's always a big amount of money. And in Poland, uh, health insurance, the national, national health insurance is about 10 euro per month. Is it much, 10 euro per month? It's not much. And you pay 10 euro per month and you have, and you have security that if anything happens, you go to hospital, they'll take care of you and you don't pay. Okay. Now, a uh, medical certificate that might be needed uh, from you that you are capable of taking up st studies. Copy of passport and two photos. That's that. Easy. Oh, this, this is something additional, but I don't, uh, I don't believe there will be too many people wanting to study this. But we do have school. It's postgraduate uh, school of French law. Uh, the, especially the, the faculty of law, they like that, and German law. Let's move on. Okay, very quickly about the mo mobility uh, programs. As I said, you, as a student of the University of Lodz, you would have a chance to go to another country to, to, to study for a semester or one year. And uh, from our university, it's about four to 500 students that we send each year. Polish and also international students going to other countries. And we have over a thousand coming to us. I don't know why they like us so much, but the number has been going. I think we are just nice. That's why. And we have also uh, so-called Erasmus agreements in 700 uh, number, which means they are more like faculty agreements between different universities in Europe and Turkey. Yes, let's move on. Career services. Now, there is a department in our university which helps the students to pick the correct internship, to pick the correct uh, career path. So, if you contact them, they will meet, meet with you, talk with you, and uh, maybe suggest something that would be of value to you. They do recruitment days, job first, internships, trainships. They are in many cases helping in finding the companies for the internships for the students. Because in Poland, when you study, you have to go and have some internship connected to your studies. Minimum is three months. Most of this is, I think, unpaid for, but there are some instances when the company gives the student also some money for working, yes? But this is a good uh, experience for somebody who just would be later on working anyways. Uh, yeah, that's it. Now, I just, here I just put some of the companies that are present in Łódź where I am aware of the fact that some of the international students are working. And I think I put Infosys at the beginning because I think it's a, a, a company owned by, right? India, right? And actually it's opposite the faculty of law. It's a three minutes walk from the dormitory. Three minutes. So you just walk. If you find a job in Infosys, if you are slow, it's five minutes. It's really, really close. Uh, Fujitsu, I mean, I can't even, I don't know even how to pronounce those, but those are the ones. There are also some Scandinavian uh, uh, companies in, in, in there. 
I'm saying this because those are, if you speak only English, th those would be the, uh, the, the companies that might be interested in having you, right? If you are looking into a job that is more professional, okay? Yeah, let's move on. Students, the number is growing, as I said, and now in Poland, the biggest number of university, I mean, of university, but students, international students, is always Ukraine. Why? Because they are our neighbors, and it always goes like that. People go west, right? So they are our neighbors, Ukrainians and Belarusians, and they are the, they constitute the biggest number of students in Poland, including our university. Now, most of them study in Polish. They take Polish foundation year, or they study before that, and they come. Some of them study in English. They study in Polish because Polish language, Ukrainian language, Russian language, Czech, Slovenian, they are very, they are from the same family root. Yes? They are not the same. I cannot understand everything, I can, but I can sort of understand the sense when they speak, right? But for them it's easy to learn. And now when you, if you come to Poland, I think you, it would be hard for you to recognize if somebody is from Poland or Ukraine, because we look the same. The same. The same Russians, I think. We look the same, right? Pretty much. So, it's like that. And uh, so Ukraine is the, the, the first one. Then we have a quite big population of Turkish students. Really big. Uh, I think they also like uh, Wuj for many reasons, also including the fact that there is a lot of pretty girls and uh, Turkish guys, they really like Polish girls. Oh, I have to say something important. Like I noticed in India, women have long hair. I don't, right? Women dress with everything really long, even in this hot weather. <laughs> yes, in Poland. If it was that hot, the girls would be walking in miniskirts. You aware of that? Normal? For you, maybe not, but it is normal in Poland, okay? And so it might be a cultural shock for someone who's never seen this, but it's, it's, it's just so obvious to everyone that when it's hot, you're, you, you don't have to dress, you know, with long trousers and stuff, okay? I also will tell you a joke, which was a true joke, because when some students come and sometimes they talk to me, we, I'm giving them some suggestions what to do, what not to do, and those two guys came to me from India and they were holding hands, and they were, you know, sitting, and my brother, my brother, holding hands, and I said, oh, guys, you are so sweet, and I know in India it's normal, you know, that guys hold one another, they, they walk together, hold hands, because this is how you are in this culture, yes? But I said, you here in Poland, you have to be careful. Why? I said, because if you hold hands in Poland, they would think you are homosexual. And they oh, we are not. And I said, it's okay, you can be homosexual. It's, it's, it's fine with me, I'm happy. But I'm just telling you, if you do that, you would be, you would, they would think you are gay, right? And they no, 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 no. So, so don't hold hands. <laughs> so, you know, little things like that. And this is, when you enter another country, you need to sort of observe, see how people react and how they behave. Now in India, when I see couple, even men and, uh, and, and a girl walking, they hardly ever hold hands, right? Not often, you don't touch. In Poland, they hold, not only do they hold hands, they, they kiss, right? In public, which for me is no good, right? But they do that. Right? Not maybe like everywhere and everyone, but it happens. Okay? So you need to be aware that each country has a different culture, different tradition. And when you are in a country that majority has a different sort of idea how the society should be run, you need to adjust yourself a little bit, right? Which doesn't mean that you have to wear mini skirts. It's okay. You don't have to. But you know what I mean? But you need to open yourself up to different strange things. Yes? Good. Oh, I, I wanted to say about uh, the tuition fee. In Poland, uh, different universities charge different fees for the studies. And uh, we kept our fees low, which is 2,000 to 
the average is 2,500 euros per year because uh, our goal as a university is to actually open the doors to the international students. International students have to pay, but Polish students are very lucky. They don't pay. Like in India, you do pay, right? For everything. In Poland, when you're born, the government pays everything for your primary school, high school, university, okay? Only if you go to a private one, you pay. But public ones are free of charge. Of course, you have to buy your books and all that, but otherwise you don't pay anything for that. You pay 17 zloty, which is like maybe three euros per your student ID, <laughs> but that's nothing, right? What is three euro? You pay when you repeat the course, you pay when you repeat, you retake examination because you, you failed. That's not huge money, but you pay. So this is how it is. But for, and also the citizens of European Union, because we are one big now Europe, they also don't have to pay if they study in Polish. <laughs> but English studies are usually paid for, okay? So, but still, you know, I think this price is very competitive. I don't think you can find uh, such good quality for this, for this money in Europe. That's one. And second of all, as I said before, Łódź as a city, it's a big city, and the price, uh, the price or cost of living is lower than it is in other cities in Poland, especially in Warsaw. Yes, let's go on. Now, important things to remember, and you'd better remember that. Yes? To so what? Yeah, okay. For accommodation? I'll get there. I'll, I'll, I'll accommodation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be talking about that in a sec, okay? I'll get there, I'll get there. Uh, the academic year starts always on the 1st of October, okay? Now, in India, there are different universities, different states have the different, I think. Where? Yes. I don't understand. No, 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 because, uh, you know, permit, residence permit is just uh, an option for to the visa, right? Either visa or, or permit. I'll be talking about that too in a moment. Let me come back to this most important sentence for me. First of October. First of October means no later than first of October. And I'm stressing this because right now it's already June. If you think about applying to any Polish university, this is the last moment to do that. Because if you apply now, the next, it will take probably about two, three weeks to complete all the acceptances, offer letter and all that. You need to have this decision fast, possibly in June, because you need to apply for a visa alone or with the help of the agent. And it's not always easy, because at this time, Polish embassy is full of applicants, full of people who want to get a visa. So you need to do it now. If you wait, if you wait till middle of July, if you wait till the end of July, you will not have a chance, you will not stand a chance to get a slot to have an appointment earlier than November. And if you inform me, Madam, I want to come, I, can, I cannot come early, I don't have visa, I have visa appointment in November, I said, sir, that's too late, we'll pay you the money back, but we can't take you. You understand? It is really serious. Sometimes people say, okay, two days, three days. I ask the faculty for the decision, for the for a consent. They say yes, then it's possible. But coming late is not really accepted, that's number one. And second of all, it's not really good for you. Because if you study, if you want to study really, first week of the studies is like the most important week of studies because you meet your professors for the first time. You need to make good impression. It's important. You have to. You have to listen to what the professor says, what they expect from you. Each classroom 
each class is different, each professor has different priorities. You need to listen carefully and note down all the necessary information. Some professors say 100% of presence in my classroom, you don't, you pass. Okay, some professors say you have to have 75% of classes present, plus, plus do two projects, plus do this and that, examination and that's it. If you're more absent than present, no way. You understand? You need to listen to that. You need to be there. They also talk about the program and what they are going to be teaching. When you come to Poland, first time, it will be a different reality, different people, they will be speaking weird language, right? They will be, it will be cold for you, for me perfect, but for you cold, okay? You, you need to understand that, that it will be a different reality for you. You will be trying to find out, oh, where do I live? How much do I pay for this? How, where do you get my food? And on the top of that, you will be missing your parents, you will be missing your friends, you will be missing Kerala because it's normal, you always do that, right? It's, 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 it's like this. And you need to prepare mentally that it's going, it may, may be difficult at the very beginning. For guys, if you're in a dormitory, and we provide dormitories for everyone, you need to clean. So you better start practicing. I'm serious. Because you're expected to keep your room clean, and there will be no mom helping, no mom cooking, okay? And then on the you still have classes, different educational system, right? Different expectations. You need to really get ready for that. Visa, as I said again, this is something most important because you can get acceptance, you can get an offer letter, yeah, you can pay for the first year, but you may not get a visa on, on time. Because most of the cases, when you apply for a visa, you get it. The problem is to get this application slot. That's the problem. Uh, as I already mentioned that the visa is for Schengen area and dormitories. We have dormitories in our university. And I guarantee everyone a place this year because I negotiated with my other vice president boss that it's important to have those places. And uh, one more thing I wanted to stress. There are no transfers, because sometimes I have situations where a candidate comes. I'm saying candidate, because to become a student you have to put all your original documents on my desk, right? We have to check everything, accept it, and then you're a student, right? Before that you are always a candidate, up until you come and get, uh, make yourself present with the documentation. And sometimes some students, some future students have this idea, okay, I'll get to the University of Lodz, but then, okay, maybe I'll go to Warsaw, or maybe go somewhere else. I'm not saying it's not possible later, but at the very beginning, we vouch for you as a university. I write letters to the Polish ambassador in Mumbai or Delhi, or, and I write there that this is a list of our future students. So if you come to my office and say, oh, madam, I'm going to Warsaw, I said, okay, again, I have to mention that in my report to another department that you are no longer with us because you are on our list. You got a visa because of the student visa to our university. You understand? So there are no transfers for the first year for sure. After a year, if you finish complete everything and you think, okay, maybe I want to transfer to another university, it's possible. Yes, but not the first year. Please be aware of that. And as I was mentioning before, you have to be financially secured. Sir here asked about the money, how much it costs, yes, to, to be in Poland. Now, a dormitory room costs about 100 euro per month per person in a double room. Okay, 100 euros. If somebody wants to rent a flat, in the city, that would be about three times more, okay? Of course, if, you've a, if you have a friend or two friends who want to rent a flat with you, it would be about 100, 120 euro per month, you understand? But for the beginning, it's, it's much easier for a person to be in a dormitory, why? Because it's safe, because there are other international students there, 
possibly also from India, right? Who may help, guide you, etc., etc. So it's safest to start with living in the dormitories. Now, after that, you can always opt for something else. People ask me also how much food costs. Sujin just went somewhere. He said that prices are very comparable to Kerala. I'm thinking here maybe might be a little bit cheaper than, than in Poland, but I'm not 100% sure. But it depends, of course, how much you eat. I know that the, the students can, can, can live on minimum, I would say, for food, maybe 150 euro per month. Yeah, if you want to eat normally, right, not starve yourself. <laughs> but if you want to go, you know, to the restaurants and have fun and go to the movies, then of course automatically it'll go up, right? But if you cook, 150 is fine, okay? Now the Polish government expects you, being in Poland, to prove that you have minimum 200 euro per month to, 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 to live in Poland, 200, okay? This is what you have to prove. So when you apply for permit, yes, the residence permit, like Sarah was asking, residence card, then you have to show different documents, also including the fact that you are still a student, and you also have to show the bank account showing income of 200 euro per month. That's not income, but somebody sending you or giving you money, right? Now, when you enter Poland first time, you always have a visa. And usually visa is for one year. So after you finish first year, October till the end of January is first semester, middle of February till the end of June is the second semester. And then July, August, sorry, yes, July, August, September are free. Those are free months for you to go back home if you want, if you passed all the examinations. Because if you didn't pass, September is for retake examinations, okay? Now, it may be possible to come back and apply for a visa because three months might be enough to go back, right? And also, there is an option of applying for a residence card in Poland. You can apply, applying it costs about 100, no, no less than 100 euro, but you have to submit your documents really carefully, everything, that, what, what they ask. If you don't do that, one document missing again at the end of the line. So if you don't prepare it well, you wait sometimes half a year or longer for this card. But once you get it, it allows you to, you know, you don't have to get a visa, you can travel on that and save. But you do not become a citizen of European Union, so it doesn't change the, the status of, of a, a person, you are still a citizen of India, okay? Now, what I notice is that our new government is trying to change the law and if I am correct, but it's not yet out there and it's not implemented, maybe there will be some possibilities of some scholarships. But that's very, if, if that happens, that would be within the next two years because there will have to be some decisions made in the university. But as of now, there's hardly any scholarships. I talked to my bosses about maybe, you know, discounting students who are excellent in studies. If they have very good studies, good grades, we should, you know, do something to help, right? If somebody doesn't do anything, doesn't come to the classes and want a discount, mm -mm. you understand? You need to show yourself as a good student. Then, then yes, why not? Yeah, let's move on. This is a poster of our students, each of them coming from a different country. As I said at the very beginning, we really, I personally love the diversity of different nations being at our university. The, the idea was to create a multitude you know, of faces just showing their youth. You can see them smiling or very, I would say, focused. They, they all come from a different country, but they have the same goal. They came to study, right? And those are the students from last year intake. Each of them was asked if they would be interested in partaking in this project. Each of them, only one person from one country. Which one is from India? Well, that's a guy, that's true. And I really love him. This guy is unbelievable. 
because he's always smiling, always. Wherever I see him, he's like smiling and he works part-time right now in Fujitsu. So he, he really, he, it's amazing to me because sometimes they say Poland is not so tolerant, right? This guy has found the, you know, the job the, f the fastest. Second semester, he already is doing some work in Fujitsu. He's an excellent student of business management and I'm really proud of him, really, because this is the, f I would say, like one of the outstanding uh, personalities that I met last year. Really a nice guy. But there are 95 nationalities in our university, 95. You understand? That's a lot. That's a lot. Then when we have a dormitory, and in this dormitory, most of the students come from different countries. When you enter a lift, when you enter an elevator, you, s you see people speaking, you know, so many languages it's like California or New York. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's our New York. <laughs> All right, let's move on. And this is this guy I was talking about, right? I don't know if I can read his name. Inderjit? Yeah? Yeah? Sing? Yeah, okay. Now, I asked him, we, when we did those posters, I said, I, I'm always surprised and I say, why Wuj? Why do you, how, how did you end up in Wuj? Because I'm always shocked. How did they find out about Wuj? So he actually said that he was applying for uh, the schools in Czech Republic, Latvia and Lithuania. Right? So it's not like he was only picking just one place, he was picking many. But what he said later, if you read it, he said that my staff was the fastest to guide him, to tell him what to do. They were assisting him the best. And this is true about my, my, my department especially, because I, I spent part of my life in California, in the States. And Americans are good at least at one thing. Yes? Service is beyond comparison with anything. When you are a client of anything, you deserve to be respected, right? Now, it's not always like that in many countries where they think when they are a bank director, they can say and do whatever they want. But in the States, no, they are very polite people. They never accuse anyone. They always ask questions, how I can help you, how, it's amazing, it's amazing. But I learned a very good lesson in the States so when I came to Poland, I decided that this is the way to run a good office. A good office is an office where people serve. They do seva, right? You know the word? They do that. And when they do that, of course, not only the life of, of, of students get better, but, but their life is getting better. Because when you help others, you actually have better life, right? So I would say that I have very beautiful people working in my office. My staff is excellent. Of course, they might be sometimes a little bit tense, they will be overworked and very busy, but they are always trying to respond and answer the questions or give a link with information to read. They are always of very big assistance. If anything happens, they always they run it. When they have something extraordinarily difficult, they come to me and say, Liliana, the student needs help with this. Then I pick up my phone, try to make some calls. And, uh, and understand what happened. But another thing I need to tell you is this. Cultural difference. In Poland, there's no bribing. No money giving to somebody to get a better grade, or being accepted to the university. It's not happening, okay? Of course it is, probably some people are taking money. People are people, right? But obviously it is like this. For example, just an example, if somebody said, okay, Liliana, you're the head of the office, you do recruitment, you do admission, yes? I give you money and you accept you, 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 everyone to the university. It is not my decision. I would never be able to take the money because I'm the administrative officer. That's number one. And I have respect for, my, for the people and myself. And second of all, the system is so closed that everything is in the system. And the decision is made not by the administration, it's made by the professor who is making a decision if somebody is good or not. You understand? So the system runs in such a way that it's very difficult for people to give money to anyone for anything. The same with the professors. Never ever think that you can give some, something to the professor to get a better grade. No. You go to the professor and say, sir, how can I make my grade better? How can I... You know, what can I do to satisfy you? Yes? And then they said, okay, maybe you do this and this project for the next week, and then we see, right? So, but it's very important to remember. 
just just know that it's impossible to give somebody money to 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 satisfy your needs you just need to do your job let's move on this girl came from nepal also very uh, beautiful story that happened when she came first day after the first day she came to my office and she was basically shaking almost crying and she felt like she's she wants to go back home like this quickly so i took her and i said are you sad and she's like mm -hmm. do you want to go back home mm -hmm. you think it's cold here and people are all white and seems like they are not smiling mm -hmm. <laughs> And I said, okay, can I give you a hug? And she said, mm-hmm. So I gave her a hug. She cried a little bit. Then I took her into my office. We spoke. And we spoke for like 15, 20 minutes. And I told her in the end, you know, this is normal what you feel. Because when you relocate yourself from one place to another, from your family to people you don't know, yes? From Kerala people to white Polish people, it is stressful, it's normal, but you need to give yourself a week, two weeks, yes, to adjust, to kind of land, because your body is in Poland, but your soul and mind is back home, you understand? So body is in Poland and you slowly get your mind and your soul to Poland as well. It's a process, yes? You need a couple of days, you need some, sometimes a couple of weeks to adjust. Just, I'm telling you that because this is very important to know. That feeling like that is okay at the beginning. When I was in the States, I was waiting for my green card for five years. Five years. And for five years I couldn't go back to Poland. It was awful. I can tell you. For the first two years, it was awful. The, what was awful was this thought and this uh, being aware of the fact I cannot go. Not the fact that I, that I can't. I can, I can always go, right? I could always go, but then I would lose something. So I was waiting, and that was stressful. So there are different situations in, 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 in life, and you need to make a decision on your own, what is good, on what, what is good for you, right? Always, wherever you go. Let's move on. Which means, we call it Christmas guest. We ask administration and professors of our university to invite international students to their Christmas table. And it, we've done it only twice. La last year it was great, 90 students went to different houses of our staff and professors and had Christmas, Christmas, Christmases with them. And those were beautiful experiences they had because the Polish family got to know a, a somebody from another culture, different religion sometimes, yes? And then a student from different culture, uh, culture got to know Polish tradition, Polish family. They got to see how it runs, how it is. They got a present sometimes even. So this is the direction we are taking with our university. This is something we want to follow through. Okay, let's move on. The next picture is just to show you how our project looked uh, two years back. Because the guy is from, uh, who is actually in the picture is from Argentina. And we were just asking them about uh, sharing some ideas of what they like in Poland or what they would want to show in their countries or their hobbies, etc. But the last year pro project was why watch. Later it's really cool because we got exhibition with the posters, right? We have like a conference, then press comes and everything happens and, and then we got the students and we pose in front of the posters. How fun, huh? And the funny parts are when the students are taking selfies with themselves and the poster behind. <laughs> That's the most popular activity that I noticed. Infrastructure, of course, just like every university, we have a library. Uh, it's a modern one, it's quite big. We have campus, it's called Lumumbovo, but there is a huge difference between Poland and Polish and, and, uh, and, and Indian uh, universities. We do not have a closed area of, uh, of, of, of campus. Our campus buildings are mostly in the same location within walking distance, but there, there, there might be street in between parks or some other places, and it's like a public area for everyone, right? 
and, and some of the buildings are a little bit further, like maybe 10 minutes away. So they are not closed. We don't do that. Accommodation. This is just a picture of a room, double room. It needs to be clean <laughs> and cleaned by person living there. Uh, but it's pretty, it's pretty good standard. It's, 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 it's good. Naprawdę, uh, naprawdę. It's, it, uh, it's really good. So uh, if you're thinking seriously about studying with us, then definitely apply for a dormitory. Okay? Uh, center for sports and recreation, of course, swimming pool, volleyball, soccer fields, etc. is just, it's just there. Can we move on? Now, some people prefer to have better, better standards, and they want to have a single room, single room. And I understand the need. But if you have that need, then the price goes up. <laughs> and uh, then I would have to offer you a private dormitory opportunity, which is not a university uh, dormitory, but it's a newly built, last year, beautiful, actually beautiful building for, for in, in thinking about international students in Łódź, because the companies from from Spain and New York, by the way, because the investors are also from there, thought it's a good idea to build a, a dormitory in Łódź because of the number of international students growing so so fast. So they did very nice job, but the price for a single room is about, I would say. 300 to 400 euro per month. For, but it's like apartment. It's like one big room with little kitchen with everything. Okay. But some people, some people like that as an opportunity, as a choice. We are also present on Facebook, and we are very easily found because if you type facebook.com/polishuniversity, you'll find us. <laughs> Though you don't have to remember it, our name, it's enough to remember Polish University, and then you'll find it. But I would suggest that you look into there, you see what's happening there, you scroll down and see what kind of events we had, what happens in the city, because we share, to make a decision if you even like it. Okay? Yeah. Smart Uni application. Uh, three years ago, it was uh, the second best, the second best, uh, application in Europe. We received an award. Right now we are reconstructing it a little bit so it might not be necessarily working correctly yet, but it is still a compendium you know, of, of a lot of knowledge. With instead of books you can scroll down, read and find out a lot of information. It's available in English as well. Yes, my dear lady. And that will be over for me speaking, but I'm sure you have questions. Yes. Uh, 